Things are starting to heat up in the 2024 Maryland Senate election. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in the new video today. It is time to talk about the 2024 U.S. Senate election in the state of Maryland because everyone... There is a growing possibility that Republicans could somehow pull off a victory in the state of Maryland. Yes, one of the most Democratic states in the country could end up with a Republican senator at the end of the year. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Again, folks, all support is greatly appreciated, and, uh, yeah. Now, I know, this seems absolutely crazy. I mean, we're talking about Maryland, one of the most Democratic states in the country. I mean, Biden won the state by 33 back in 2020. So, why is there a possibility Republicans could win? Well, obviously, Republicans have a real good candidate in Larry Hogan, the former governor who was super popular. I mean, he had like a 70% approval. He won in a landslide back in 2018. He is super popular. Well, he shocked the world and announced he is running for the Senate seat and he is going to be the Republican nominee. So things were bad enough for Democrats that Larry Hogan was running for the Senate seat. Super popular, even with Democrats, he's well liked. Well, on top of that, Democrats are facing a super competitive primary, but most people thought, you know, David Trone, the congressman from Maryland 6, he was going to win. He's a self-funder. He was probably going to pull off the victory and was going to win this fall. Well, the past 72 hours have not been good for David Trone because look at that headline. Black Democrats endorse in Maryland Senate race after a racial slur. And you can probably guess who said the slur. David Trone. He made a big F up at a committee hearing in Congress. So let's get into it. Five black House Democrats are endorsing Democrat Angela Olsabrooks in her Maryland Senate bid, days after her primary opponent apologized for using a racial slur in a House hearing. Now that's not good optics. Now to be frank though, these Democrats were probably going to endorse Olsabrooks from the start, but... The way it happened is not a good look for David Trone. And remember, Maryland is like 30% African American. The optics of what he said is not going so well for him. Not at all. The five lawmakers bucked their house colleague, David Trone, also Brooks' primary opponent, in endorsing the Prince George's County Executive, Axios has learned. Trone used a racial slur in a house hearing last week. He apologized on Friday, saying he meant to use the word bugaboo. I'm not going to say what he actually said because it's pretty bad. But either way, this was not what Trone needed. I mean, David Trone was leading the polling for a good while. You scroll down here and he was up over Ulster Brooks by, you know, around double digits. But it wasn't a foregone conclusion that he was going to win. He was the favorite, but... He wasn't going to win by 50, but most people thought, you know, he was probably going to hold off Ulster Brooks. Well, now there's a big question about that because Trone made such a big F up that a bunch of Democrats are now backing Ulster Brooks. Trone is considered the front runner in the Democrat primary. Trone and Ulster Brooks are seeking the face of Republican Governor Larry Hogan, a popular former Maryland governor for the Senate seat in November. Representatives Barbara Lee, Gregory Meeks, Joyce Betty, Yvette Clark, and Jasmine Crockett endorse Ulster Brooks. The Democratic primary in the state has become one of the most expensive in the country. And this is why this situation could end badly for Democrats, no matter who the nominee is. Because Trone was the frontrunner, but you notice how this primary, even before what Trone said, was close. I mean, he was up, but... He wasn't above 50. He was at, you know, 45%, maybe 49. Like, best case scenario, he was at 49, which it was a poll sponsored by his campaign. But either way, he wasn't the, you know, 100% guaranteed a victory. And this was before the 
what he said in the House floor. Now, a lot of Democrats are not happy with what he said. And even beforehand, over $29 million has already been spent on the race, according to Ad Impact Politics. That makes the third most expensive primary in the country, with Trone, a wealthy businessman, accounting for 97% of that spending. So, even before this scandal hit Trone, he's already been spending like $25 million on the race, while Ulster Brooks has spent around $2 million. Listen, it's going to balloon from here on out. And this was, you know, just a couple months ago. This was as of December 31st. I guarantee you, this number has ballooned way more than what it was back in December. And that was before this happened. And a bunch of Democrats are now supporting Ulster Brooks because of what Trone said. And on top of that, even before the scandal, even before the primer, even before all of that, Hogan leads Ulster Brooks and Trone in a hypothetical general election matchups, according to a Washington Post University of Maryland poll. Yeah, Hogan is leading both of them. Granted, he has far more name recognition and all of that, but he's up against Schroen by like 12 points. And Schroen has spent $23 million. And this is not going to include outside spending. I, I guarantee you, there's going to be a lot of groups spending money on this primary. Even before the general election, which is already going to be a tough matchup against Larry Hogan, who despite having a quote-unquote competitive field he is gonna win this race by a lot at least in the primary he's gonna win it by probably 40 points at the bare minimum he gets like 70 percent of the vote he's gonna win easy so you just start doing the math and you realize hey wait a minute democrats have a super competitive primary even before the crap trone said they've already spent Almost $30 million on the race, with Trone spending a lot of his own money. Now, you're going to have a lot of outside groups invest even more. And you also have to deal with Larry Hogan. Who again, back in 2018, won by 12 points. In a blue wave. I know it's a governor's race, but look at some of the margins he got in, say, Baltimore County. A county, Biden won by 30. He won by 30 points. Look at a place like Montgomery. Hogan barely lost by 10. Trump lost it by, good lord, 60 points. This is a strong recruit for the Republican Party. And you talk about best case scenario? If Hogan somehow pulls this off, I don't care if he votes only 40% Republican. I don't care. This would be a huge blow to the Democrats' majority. It would kill any shot of the majority for the Democrat Party. Because even if they somehow won Ohio, somehow won Montana, which I don't think is going to happen now, if Hogan wins Maryland, yeah, he's going to be like a Susan Collins type, but it would still give Republicans the majority in the Senate. Yeah, led by moderates, but that's not good for the Democrat Party. Plus, you're talking about a lot of money having to be spent in the state. Just ignore the primary. You're going to have to spend a lot of money trying to beat Larry Hogan. That money could be spent in Ohio, Montana, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, but no. Because they don't want to risk losing a Senate seat in a deep blue state like Maryland. They might have to spend a lot more than they want to. And this is best case scenario for the GOP, because even if they lose the seat, they're forcing Democrats to spend an ungodly amount of money in the primary, let alone the general. This is exactly what the Republican Party needed. They needed one race like this where the primary is super competitive on the Democrat side, while Republicans have a very good recruit, very well liked. And he could focus on the general without having to go through a gauntlet of the primary. Well, Democrats, spending God knows how much in the primary, are going to be very weak going to the general. 
And Trone, his slip-up, is probably going to cost him a lot of support. While Ulsa Brooks, she does not have the name recognition of Trone. So at this point, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation for the Democrat Party. Now, I still think Democrats win the seat, but the past 72 hours, especially with Hogan in the race, has changed my perspective on the seat. I really think Republicans could pull this off. Now, don't spend $80 million here, all right? Spend like at most $10 million or something. Spend that money in Ohio, Montana, etc. Let Democrats burn money. Because best case scenario, you win the state of Maryland and Democrats wasted a ton of money trying to protect it. Worst case scenario, eh, Hogan loses, but Democrats still would have spent $20 million, $30 million, maybe even $50 million trying to beat him. And he's already up by 20 points right now. So either way, this is perfect news for the GOP. I hope it comes down to the wire, you know, a third candidate rises out of left field, you know, someone gets like 20% of the vote, no one cracks 50, it's a complete mess. That would be the absolute best case scenario for the GOP, because at that point, especially if Ulsa Brooks is the nominee, Hogan might be a slight favorite. We just got to see what happens, but I am starting to like our chances in the state of Maryland. I never thought I would say that, but the news just looks good on paper, but it is still a R plus 30 or D plus 30 seat. Will Hogan's coalition translate, which basically involves winning a bunch of Democrats in the DC suburbs and around Baltimore. If he can do that and Trump does just five points better statewide, there's a possibility that we end up with a Republican senator in Maryland. That would be our reverse Joe Manchin. Granted, he won't be 90% Republican, but much rather have a 40 to 50% moderate, you know, votes with us 40, 50% of the time, and a deep blue seat than a complete partisan hack like David Trone. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.